Um, so we'll be all over the place like we usually are, but we're excited to be back. And uh, we hope that everybody can get one little tidbit of information from the place. Are you guys going to use the whiteboard at all? Just for a second. Okay. So real quick, before we get started, just want to run around real quick and like a couple words say who you are and what you're hoping to get out of So we want this class to bring value to everyone. You don't have to record it. I'll say it out loud on what I'm writing on the board. Um, so we want everybody to get something out of this class. So your, your name and what you'd like to get out of today's class so that we can hopefully tackle everybody's points. Who wants to be the brave one and start? My name's Paul. I've um, been here since September and I'm looking to get you know, the best out of lead gen and, and, and the best ideas from from the top team. Cool, keep going, who's next? I'm Courtney, um, I've been here since, I guess, mid-February. Um, I have a bunch of buyers, I need listings. Okay, so ideas on how to get listings. We all. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Rob? I'm Rob, uh, I started two weeks ago, and I'm just looking to get started. Awesome, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I'm Lisa. Um, I started actually right before the pandemic. Um, I'm here just to get some inspiration for our social media because I'm not really good at it. And I'm Heather, um, I got my license in July and I'm just here to learn whatever you guys have to say because I know you guys are killing it. So learn anything? Yeah, <laughs> listings, <laughs> listings. Hi, I'm Raman. Uh, I'm new here. I'm starting two weeks ago. And I'm still looking. So. I'm Barb. <laughs> I've been here for a while. <laughs> um, no, so seriously, I am always after these guys to have several different sources of lead gen. So you guys are social media queens and just top listing agents. So I'm just hoping you will share your experience and wisdom with this group so they can do what they got to do. Hi, I'm Marsha. Everybody knows me, I guess, at this point. Uh, I'm one of the original 15 opening agents at Keller Williams. Wow. <laughs> we went to lunch on Friday. Uh, I'm just here to find out what you're going to say because I think they'll come back to me and have want me to maybe repeat some of your per pearls of wisdom. So I'm just here to listen in. I'm Mariah, and I'm a brand new agent. Um, I'd love to learn more about how to use my social media to reach more people. Uh, Tracy Mayer, I've um, been in the business since 04, been here since 09. Um, getting ready to relocate to Florida, so I'm looking for uh, utilizing social media to help me build business in an area where I don't know people. Are you leaving us? Oh. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the plan, <laughs> but probably maybe in six months. So. All right, great. Uh, Susan Murphy. Um, I've been doing this for, I guess, about five years now. Um, and I, I know nothing about social media. I know nothing about it. And Lauren said I should pop my head in, so <laughs> maybe you guys will help me. Awesome. Brooke. A little bit about yourself. I am Brooke. I have been in the business about seven years. Uh, my mom says I've been in the business my whole life because she's been in it for longer than I've been alive. Um, so I have a passion, obviously, with social media, and it is where I've gotten most of my business. Probably, I'd say, 90% of my business. Um, so I started real estate after owning a cleaning company and it just beat my body up. Um, my mom was looking for an assistant and I was like, mm, maybe I'm going to be your assistant. So I went to real estate school. I got into um, being her assistant and I hated real estate school. I'm like, yeah, no, nope, not getting my license. I'll just be your assistant. So I was her assistant. I shadowed her on every appointment that she would let me go on. Is that um, for about three years. And I decided after seeing these paychecks rolling across her desk, maybe I'll go to school again. So I went to school again and that time it was like totally different. I think because I was already in the business and kind yeah, of like had a way to learn. It. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so I went to school again, had a totally different experience, totally different approach on schooling. Um, and then it's kind of been 
crazy ever since. Um, but I definitely, definitely, definitely thank social media for my success because I'm in the generation. So most of you guys are young. Um, thank all you. Of you guys are young. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a way for you know, to connect with people who you may not even talk to ever. Um, like half the people, I'm like, I don't even know who you are, but sure, I'll sell you a house. I'd love to. Um, and I know my mom connects with people that she went to high school with. She's like, geez, I haven't talked to them in so many years. And they reached out to me to sell the house. So it is like the most awesome key ever. Um, so it's a passion of mine. And I hope that you guys can get something out of it. The girl who hated real estate and would never, ever do that. Never would ride around with buyers and sell so, yeah, so I'm just going to give you guys a real quick blurb about myself. Just to give you kind of an idea of where I'm coming from. Um, I'm going to start by saying, and I always say this, I'm not a professional speaker. I actually can talk to anybody about listing or selling or buying a house, but when it comes to this classroom thing, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, my name is Phyllis May Lynch. I actually have no cards, I'm like Brooke, who can do everything off the cuff. Um, I wanted to start by saying that you guys have the world in the palm of your hands. I mean, right now, first of all, at Keller Williams, with command, with the marketing, with all the night, with all the training here. It's like nothing I've ever experienced or had before I came to Keller Williams. Um, and for those of you, do you guys know what the drunk monkey is at Keller Williams? Does everybody know what the drunk monkey is? Maybe they do. Okay, so we always say, especially for you brand new agents, the drunk monkey is the little guy that's on your shoulder going, oh my God, she's crazy. That's never going to work. Like, oh yeah. I'm, I can't do that. I'm they're never going to do that. that. Yeah, they're they're going to hang up on me. Yeah, they're going to hang up on me. Oh God, I would feel weird. I'm not doing that. You know. That's the drunk monkey. So we say, you know, get the drunk monkey off your back here and open up your mind because the amaze, the uh, opportunities are amazing. Um, so really, really quick, a history about myself. I graduated high school in 1981, and I immediately got a job um, at Sun Oil right out of high school. Worked at Sun Oil, went to college. They paid for my education. I had a great job, great benefits, great vacation pay. They paid for 90% of my education. I went to Villanova after I left. Delaware County Community College and graduated from Villanova while climbing the corporate ladder at Sun Oil. In 1985, I graduated from Villanova and I was like, this is really cool, but God, it like really stinks punching a clock and answering to somebody. And I had a husband who was self-employed and a family full of self-employed people, no one in real estate. But I thought to myself, there's just gotta be a better way. So in 1988, I got a really nice promotion, still had this great job. And I got a boss who absolutely hated me. Um, not sure why, but he did. But he was making my life miserable and I hated my job. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. So in a nutshell, I took a voluntary termination package and left, left Sun Oil cold turkey and said, I'm going to get a real estate license. I got six months full pay, got a real estate license, knew nothing about nothing, had no training, nowhere to go. Unlike this amazing office that offers everything, I went to a little rinky-dink firm in Collingdale. No social media, no MLS, no cell phones, no texts, no, none of this. So you were handed a thick book and said, here's a book of houses, Mr. Buyer. Pick one out, circle them, and we'll go see them, if you're lucky <laughs> enough that they'll still be there. And I'll come meet you, and you can drive in my car with me, and we'll go from office to office, and I'll pick up all the keys for all the different houses before I meet you, because there are no lock boxes. And then if you like something, and we have to put an offer, anyway, you get the gist of we'll it. We'll write so. an offer on carbon paper. We'll write an <laughs> offer on a 12-page carbon, yeah, so, and then I'll go drive it to the listing agent anyway. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, I know Barb and Marcia, they're laughing at, because they know it's so true. I mean, that's the way it was. And my point is, leading to this whole social media class, you guys have the world, right? I, I'll say in the palm of your hand. I'm trying to be polite. So. Brooke is a top agent in our office. She says she does 90% of her business because of social media. I say it's a lot more than that, but the key is building your database, which is what she's gonna show you how to do. You can use social media all day long. Every single day, Keller Williams offers command. I never used command. I was never that lucky to have command. I did everything manually. You should be building your database with people, and she's gonna show you how every day through social media and other ways and every day you should be adding five to 10 people to your database, minimum. There's no reason with social media why you can't because the bigger your database, the bigger your bank account. So I'll let Brooke take it from here. So we forgot um, to do this in the beginning. Everybody stand up. On the count of three, you can hold your noisemaker. On the count of three, you're gonna, you know, move, jump, like whatever you gotta do, like loosen up. You're gonna scream, you're gonna shout, you're gonna make a lot of noise because
but your energy is here right now, and we gotta get it here. Okay? Woo! Okay. 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 Woo! Instagram, although Instagram is amazing too and can absolutely make you a lot of money if you have Instagram. Um, I'm not organized enough, to be very honest, to be exactly not organized at all. <laughs> um, two databases, so we'll just go with that. Um, so Facebook is literally, I do everything on it. Um, I probably post way too much on it. However, people um, notice what I post, what we post. And we make brands for ourselves through ways that you wouldn't even really realize that it's a brand for yourself. Um, you want to talk about your flag thing? Yeah, so I am patriotic and I like an American flag. So we're going to start by saying everybody needs to pick a brand. Whatever it is that you do. I know Heather, I'm going to focus on you because she's an amazing workout guru. And I mean, I follow her with her workouts because that's an interest to me. So she could, for example, make her brand be her gym thing or whatever it is. Whatever. My thing is American flags and I love ice cream. So that's my brand. So I can't tell you how many days I walk in here and there's a flag gift on my desk or somebody's posting on my page, oh, look at this American flag I just saw, or oh, look at this new Dairy Queen or whatever. So create yourself a brand, whatever it is that defines you. Um, I have two Rottweilers who since passed, but like I was using them in a lot of my marketing. Um, and people, every time they saw a Rottweiler, they would think of me and they would send me pictures and they would drop off Rottweiler stuff at my house and stuff like that. So it's just, like a way to kind of, if people are thinking about you without directly thinking of you, if that makes sense. And it's not it's about real estate. We're talking about okay. right something on a personal level. Um, so that's awesome. Definitely um, an extra. So we use Facebook to keep in contact with future and past clients. So every single person that you ever know in your entire life, add to your Facebook. If you see mutual friends, this person, oh, she might be a mutual, she's a mutual friend with Phyllis, people you may know, or however it pops up. Add them, what do you have to lose? Who cares if they don't accept it or think you're creepy? It doesn't matter. Add whoever you can add, because they're another contact, and they're gonna see your stuff, they're gonna comment on your stuff, you're gonna comment on their stuff, and they're gonna see that you're an actual real person. Let me back up one step too by saying that we have personal Facebook pages and we have business page, Facebook pages. Personally, if you went on my business page right now, I probably haven't posted in there in about two years. I don't even need to, I don't really even use it. In fact, I probably should just delete it. We find that you're more success. We are more successful using our personal stuff, and Brooke will get into that. But um, so the people that you're friends with on Facebook, how many of like your friends? So like one out of ten, say. You know, the scheme of things. How many of them actually know you, you think? At least, say, eight out of ten, probably. Like, you went to school with them, you met their mom, like, you know this one or that one. So, they already know you in some sort of way, probably like you, and somewhat maybe trust you. Maybe you gotta gain their trust. Um, so, what we're gonna teach you today is to stock up on note cards, um, sympathy cards, thank you cards, hi, congratulations, new job, um, pet sympathy, whatever. Stock up on note cards at the dollar store and keep them in your drawer, ride around with them in the center columns of your, of your car, whatever you want to do. And we make it a part of our day um, to sit on our computer in the morning. I do it in the afternoon and I do it in the evening. And I scroll through my Facebook and I look for major life events. I look for somebody whose pet just passed away. I look for somebody who just had a baby, somebody that just got engaged. And as soon as I see any of that, I screenshot it and I email it to myself. Because as soon as I get in, like when I'm done what I'm doing, I'm going to sit at my computer, look up their addresses, and I'm going to hand write them a note card. And I have to have them there because if I don't, let's be real, we're never gonna do it. Um, so we go through the news feeds and literally pick life events and make note cards and mail them directly to you. So I do them with I did one the other day with a pet sympathy card to everybody in the family. When you lose a pet, it's a big deal. Um, 
And it meant the world to the family if that I sent them. Every single one of them. There was, there was three of them. They all sent me a picture of the card that I sent them. Now, I did that because I wanted to do that, not for business. There was nothing that said Keller Williams in there. It was only Brooke Lynch. And it was about them, and it was about their pet. And I put a picture of the pet on there, and I mailed it to them, and it literally meant the world to them. So it was a different approach. Um, and again, it's because we care. But that's going to be the... the what you create on Facebook when you start interacting with these people. Now they have my trust and you're kind of gonna guide them that way. And then of course, when they are looking to buy or sell, who do you think they're gonna call? Right. But you don't wanna send them one card and forget about them. Once you have their address now, you're gonna add them to your database, whatever it might be. Command, um, we use like a spreadsheet, like a Excel spreadsheet, um, but just make sure that's not a one and done thing. In a month from now, in two months from now, whatever your system is, Send them a mailer here. Send them a just thinking of you, a Merry Christmas, or not Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and you know. So uh, keep in touch that way as well. Did you have an answer? I think you answered it. I was going to ask if you insert a business card or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. But... Not in the personal stuff. So like, yeah. if I were to see something, if I were to just check in with you, maybe I, I do have, we do Happy Holiday cards. So if I send you a Happy Holiday, it will on the back say, Brooke Lynch, Keller Williams Real Estate. Like if you're thinking about buying or selling, reach out. Um, but like if you just had a baby, no, it's about you and your baby. If you just lost a pet, nope, it's about you. So what Brooke is talking about really in the social media and whether you know people or you don't, basically you're looking to build relationships. Because the more relationships you have, the bigger your database is going to be. And with what Brooke is talking about, how she checks in throughout the day, now I'm, I'm thinking about you, Tracy, because I know you're starting in a whole fresh thing, so I'm going to focus on that too. But when you wake up in the morning, it should be part of your job. It is my job every day to get on Facebook. And for those of you who know me, you'll see that I'm on there a lot. And I have two brothers that are also real estate brokers, and they say, hey, you're like on Facebook way too much. Well, if you knew how much business I got as a result of the relationships I have built and the people that I haven't seen in 40 years and 35 years, you would maybe want to be on Facebook too. But with regard to like, I'm going to use Tracy, I'm going to point her out as an example. Not, you might be in a brand new area, or you might just try and be trying to do a fresh start or whatever. You can join uh, whatever it is. Like I know Hussein, who's not here right now, who's blowing my mind with how good he is, and I know he's gonna crush it. Um, he just joined the mosque, because that's his whatever. And he literally goes and joined the mosque, and he gets involved in their activities. Maybe it's not what he really feels like doing, but he's like, I don't know anybody here. He's from Pakistan, right? So he's trying to build on, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, I'm sure he wouldn't, because he's amazing. But he is crushing it because he is soliciting people that he doesn't even know. He doesn't know anything about them, but he's getting to know them. He's joining in the activities. He's joining the social events. And guess what? As soon as he does that, he's adding them to his data database. And then he's getting to know the family. And it kind of is a little bit of a long shot. And it might take a little longer, Trace, but that's how it happens. I mean, through events, through joining. I mean, I there's a gym that I go to. and. I can't even count the money that I've made. And it's not because I walk around and go, oh, I sell hands, does anybody want to buy a house? No, but it's like, you get to talk and then it's like, hey, where are you from? We're in the easiest business in the world because it's so easy to talk to a stranger and say, hey, where are you from? Oh, really? Well, I'm in the real estate business and blah, blah, blah. And people love to talk about real estate. So as a result of my joining this $10 a month facility, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years just because people know me. And if I know you and I need you, sorry to tell you, but you're going on my database, you're getting friend requested from me, you're getting my junk in the mail, you're getting my emails, I will find you and I will hunt you down. And if I can't find you, I'm going to ask you what you're on social media as, because a lot of people are like their first and middle name, so I'm like, hey, are you on social media? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I, I couldn't find you, what are you on there as? And, uh, and they might not care about your real estate today, and they might not notice you today, but eventually when they know somebody or they hear of somebody or maybe themselves that's looking to buy, sell, invent, or invest or rent in real estate, they're going to be like, they're going to think of you because you're out there constantly, which again, Brooke will come back to. But wait, you just brought up something else. Oh, with your name on Facebook, be who you are. If your name is Mary Smith, don't be Mary Schmary. Be Mary Smith. Like, be who you are because otherwise people who know you aren't going to even know who you are if they have it. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just thinking, um, do you make yourself more public? I am totally public. Public. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. And the reason for that is too, if somebody finds you on realtor.com or Zillow or they're driving through a neighborhood and they see your sign, guess what the first thing they're doing is? Looking you up on social media. On Google. <laughs> they're gonna look you up on Google and then they're gonna look you up on Facebook and then they're gonna look you up on whatever other platforms and they wanna see what you look like. They're gonna, they're gonna do some creeping. They wanna see like if you're doing anything or you know, whatever. So whether you're brand new and you haven't done anything or you've been in the business 30 years, make it look like you're doing something. Take the listings in this office. We are totally fine with you guys all sharing our listings. You don't even have to ask for permission. From us. From, from us. Agents, if yeah. it's somebody else's listing, you should go to them and say, hey, would you mind? Do not share the listing. Download the pictures and upload it as if it's your own. If it's a shared listing, it doesn't get hardly any attention. If it's your own post, it goes a lot further. Which is awesome. So what Brooke is saying, like for example, like and, and Terry, I'm not sure how you would do this, but you might be able to jump on the bandwagon too with somebody like wherever I don't know how that works in Florida, wherever you end up, but you could totally do the same thing. And when you make your post public, you're gonna pull in people that you've done that and that's so I'm happens. gonna touch on that a little bit too once we get to like the whole business page that Tracy. Right. So we'll tie into that in a minute, Roger. Uh, I keep hearing like mixed uh People like saying uh, you should use a personal or, or it's illegal, you should use a business account. Or so, on, that? on your personal page, we do have all of our Keller Williams information. I have all my, my, my realtor, my address, my phone number for Keller Williams, everything is on my personal page. So, it absolutely has to be on your page. It doesn't have to be on every post, I don't believe, but if, if somebody clicks on me, it's all there. All my Keller Williams stuff is there. So, you absolutely have to have that. And you can talk to Barb and Marcia and they can figure out exactly what you need to do to set you up on that. But that is true. You do need to advertise Keller Williams. So like if somebody clicks on the house that you posted, like it'll bring yes. them to your profile where all of that information well, is. Like Instagram will block you. If you're I don't like use Instagram, so I wouldn't Facebook do that. Would do, I think. Wait, what? I think if you're doing a, a paid ad through command on Facebook, you need a business account. Yeah. You have business to account. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's, I mean, I guess you could use both. So my, my, and, and so while we're talking about events, so Tracy, if you have a business account in Florida and you, wherever you go, like hopefully there's Keller Williams down there and you ask an agent in the office to create, to share one of their listings, hopefully they wouldn't mind. Why would they? You're going to hopefully sell it. Um, but if you have a business page, you can, I'll see if I can do it from here. You can actually go in there. So you can go in your business page. I have to send myself a code. <laughs> so, and with what Brooke is saying too, while she's looking for that, so like for you newer agents or <coughs> not so new agents, it doesn't really matter. I mean, take a listing, anybody's listing, and I always say with regard to my personal page, I don't want to blow it up with real estate, but I want to be noticed. So you'll see, I might have a just listed, a just sold, an open house. Now, if you don't have any of those things, like Brooke is saying, borrow them from another agent. Just reach out to an agent and say, can I advertise your listing as a just listing? Because on social media, on Facebook, yes, you want to build your relationships, but you also want people to think of you when they think of real estate, but you don't want to be that annoying person either. That, oh God, that's all they do is post their stuff. They don't want to constantly see real estate. So it might be, here's my Rottweiler, just listed, going to the beach, here's my ice cream cone, whatever it is that you are into. But use other agents' listings to make it look like you're doing business. Um, so if you have, whether, like I said, so this is for your business page only. I don't think you can, and like you said, you'll probably get flagged with your personal page. But if you have a business page, you can boost a post. So what you do is you put the information in with the pictures of the houses and everything, and then you boost the post. You can do it for $5. Do it for a hundred dollars, whatever you want to do. I think I used to do them for around ten to twenty dollars. That's what I used to spend. But it shows you here, two thousand one hundred forty-six people that that reached, and there were fifteen engagements. So an engagement means they liked it, they commented on it, something like that. So Tracy, that would be good for you when you're in Florida, because you don't know anyone. So if you were to boost the post, it would send, you know, that house or wherever to everybody locally who is searching, you can put in all of your own, uh, whatever you want, the, the, tar the, the target areas. Um, so you can put like hashtag different areas and that'll pop up. And you guys can obviously do it here too. Just a tip on that, you have to put the, <clears throat> it's for housing, because if not, they'll deny the, the boost. Like okay. Facebook will deny it. You have to put it for, like there's an option that says. Right. So housing. anybody that's looking into housing on Facebook though, it'll come through to them. 
Um, so then what I always recommend doing is going through the comments. So this one didn't have any comments, but once, usually when you do them, they get like comments and stuff. And I go through, if so-and-so, if, if Phyllis Lynch tags Brooke Lynch in a real estate post, to me that says Brooke Lynch is looking for a house, right? Why else would she tag me in it? Um, so I go through and I message them and I say, hi Brooke, I see that Phyllis tagged you in my recent post on Facebook. Um, are you in the market for a home? Would you like to set up a tour kind of thing? And you can actually get a lot of engagement from that. I have a client who actually, I put, her, I put them under contract last night and I met her on Facebook from a post. It was a boosted, pay, a boosted house in Aspen. I spent $12 on it. Um, I had it up to 15, but it, it like reached its max or something at 12 bucks. Um, she commented on it, she tagged her husband. And I messaged her and I said, hey, Jordan, I see you just tagged Dustin, Craig, the same last name, in this post. Are you guys in the market for a house? And she messaged me. She's like, oh, yeah, but we already have a realtor. I was like, oh, okay, well, if I can help, please let me know, you know, whatever. Well, guess who added her as a friend? Me. Guess who in a year later sold her a house? Me. Guess who she just bought an investment property from? Me. And guess whose house she's getting ready to list again? And then she's going to be buying another one. Oh, from a $12 Facebook right. post. And she had an agent. But I, that didn't scare me. I still added her. I wasn't, after she told me I had an agent, that was it. I let it go. But she continued to see my stuff on Facebook. Right. She continued to see my just listed. She continued to see my just sold. She continued to see all of it. And then at whatever point, she reached back out to me. And she's like, hey, check out this house. Can we go see it? Oh, you're an agent. Yeah, let's go. Um, so yeah, you never know. And a lot of people will tell you they have an agent too because they're afraid of commitment. Mm -hmm. So. It doesn't cost anything to add someone. We always say the worst thing that they can do if you're getting on there and they're just delete you. So don't leave me out. So I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So say you're, um, say you don't have the connection on social media yet, but you've already engaged with this person. Do you just research them and try to find them on social and I then? Do. Okay. So like open house contacts. So you can look for people on open houses. Um, and it, like if you have kids like go, like add like parents on there because they're obviously going to talk a lot um mm -hmm. teachers like whoever you can find my mom has sold multiple houses to my second grade teacher um uh, like, you teachers? still own me commission six houses <laughs> by actually over the years but here's from my second grade teacher but they're yeah. friends on facebook she sees everything that we're doing like she's comments on everything so i we're, we talked about like blogging on facebook in the morning and like going through and scrolling through another thing you want to do with facebook and this is really the biggest part of growing your database is when you go on facebook pick a friend pick any friend pick one of your friends and scroll through their friend list and if you have even ever met that person that they're friends with, anything at all, any connection that you've had with any of their friends, friend request them. Now, I personally don't just go friend requesting all their friends, but if it's like a mother, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, I don't care how well I know them, but if they've ever met me for one second or I've ever spoken to them, I add them. And that is a part of growing my database too. And as I add people to Facebook, and you guys might already have a bunch of Facebook contacts, if you do, you need to start growing your database by keeping the name of them and starting to grow all the other information. Gather up their email, gather up their address. With the, with the multiple listings, right, you can come up with their address for your database. Um, so make it part of your daily routine to go through Facebook and look through your friends' friends and friend request your friends' friends who you have had any contact with. Does that make sense? I know it's like. And there's like a people you may know thing that pops up a lot too. Always add everybody because it usually picks people who have multiple mul multiple mutual friends. Just be careful because we say use your personal page. So when you're using your personal page, you know, nothing religious, nothing, I say political, like don't get anything too crazy that you'll offend anybody, that kind of stuff. So keep it while you will. Um, so we, I'm getting back into lead generating, my team and I, and uh, Paul jumped in with us, which was awesome. So I do my lead generating. I'm afraid, to be very honest, to pick up the phone and cold call. So I do my lead generation through Facebook because it's already people I feel like I can relate to. So I literally get on Facebook for my lead generation. I do an hour a day, um, and it's typically in the morning, and I send everybody, like, Usually the people that are online, but if I already have this conversation with them not too long ago, I'll keep scrolling further and further down. Um, hey Paul, 
I hope you are well. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Makes you think about it for a second. Not, hi Paul, do you know anyone? No, I don't know anyone. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And the amount of people yeah, who are going happy to um, refer you is amazing. Um, a lot of times too, I say, hi Paul, who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? We're having, no, no, no. Hi Paul, I hope all is well. We're having a referral competition at work and I need your help. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And they do want to help you, so hopefully they'll send you some contact information. Now, if they send you somebody, add them on Facebook right away, and then message them or ask them, hey, would you mind if you give me their number or you know whatever? And then don't let it fall there. Like Keep a notebook with you while you're doing this. Because if so-and-so refers you to somebody and you don't reach out right now, you're going to forget it. You're never going to go back to them. So two things real quick. I just have to, have to throw this in because you just admitted you're drunk monkey. Um, and I got to play coach for just a second because I want everybody to get rid of the drunk monkey. But you may be hesitant to call people. But I do have to say, you know, tell you or remind you or share you that twice we had script the in. bracket of script off. And the champ was Brooke Lynch, and that was a simulated phone call yeah. with handling objections. And she, and she won. Me. Yes, yes. We had, she um, beat so it's not people. the objections yeah. that I'm afraid of. I'm, to be honest, I'm a beast with objections. <laughs> um, I just don't like to pick up the phone and call people, even even people I know. I don't, I don't want to call you. Um, I guess I don't like when people call me. So I'm like, oh, you're right. I think it's, a, it's the younger generation. I was generation. Gonna say, it's a millennial thing. We don't yeah. call yeah. people. Yeah. 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 It's a millennial thing. I don't think it makes me, it me, I'm like, why are you calling me? Yeah. 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 My, my generation yeah. is my three or four texts back, and I'm, I'm picking up the phone because I can't just yeah, do exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. So it depends. Like maybe you have somebody that, you know, message them or whatever, and hey, do you have a quick second for a call? And if they're like, hey, sure, everything's going great right now. Give me a call right now. Um, me, I just, it's not my style. Um, can I do it? Absolutely. But I just would rather message on Facebook and that's where my success has been. Um, and then a lot of times when I, I tried, when I first, and the tries, you don't try, you do. Um, when I first started the whole lead gen thing here at Keller Williams, I was calling a lot of my friends that I went to high school with and they would literally deny my call and text me and say, Hey, what's up? And I'm like, um, <laughs> nothing. It's fine. <laughs> So, Pick a style that works for you, though. Everyone's mm -hmm. different. Yeah, but I'm different. having a referral competition at work. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And if you can commit one hour a day to that, five days a week, guarantee you, you will get business. So when, with what Brooke was talking about, too, when friends, whether it's through your business page or through your personal page, when you put a post up, it's an open house or whatever, and somebody comments on it, don't let that person comment and get away. If they're tagging someone, it's usually someone that you don't know. Don't let them get away because like Brooke said, that person is probably maybe looking for a house, maybe thinking about looking for a house. When you reach out to them, what do you say if you reach out to a phone call? Let me see, I um, just posted one the other day. Because a lot of times when you post this thing, your follow-up is everything. Like you social media all day long, but if you're not following up with the hits that you're getting, it's, it's really kind of, and that's the thing too, guys, like take a notebook with you everywhere you go, because like you'll be sitting in your and doing your lead gen. I, I do it at nine o'clock in the morning. I have two little kids. By the time I get to the office, I'm lucky if I make it here by nine. Um, but have a notebook with you everywhere you go, because although I'm sitting there from nine to 10, doesn't mean everybody else is. So you might, I might not get a message back until three o'clock in the afternoon from somebody that I messaged. And then I might be out on the road doing a listing appointment or something. So if I open that message, guess who's gonna to forget to go back to it? Me, I'm really unorganized. Um, but I have my notebook with me everywhere. So I'm like, ooh, reach back out to so-and-so. Um, and it's literally on my to-do list where I send myself an email and the email doesn't go away until it's handled. Um, because truthfully in this business, we're doing a million and one things all day long. We're always in different places. We're never at our desk for a full eight hours. Um, so you will forget. So just have whatever organization system works for you and do it because as long as you're organized, you won't let anything slip through the cracks. So I posted 
here's an example of a hex. Um, so this one is really cute and really overpriced. <laughs> but I got some great activity on it because it's pretty and it shows well and it's going to attract the mostly first time home buyer generation because of its looks. So I go through and I see who tagged who. I know there was somebody. Is it all? Okay. So Marley here. Can you guys see that? Tags. Matt. Hey, that's my client. No, her mom's your client. <laughs> so I'm going to, so they're together. So I'm going to message Marley and I'm going to say, hey, Marley, I noticed that you uh, tagged Matt in my recent post. Are you guys looking to buy or sell a house? I mean, are you guys looking to buy a house? And then the conversation goes from there. Hey, Brooke, no, not yet. We're still working on credit. Um, we're hoping to buy by the spring of next year. Well, guess who has my handy dandy planner and is going to write in spring of next year, contact Marley or in Matt are getting ready to buy a house. And I want to write that down so that I do not forget to come back to it. So in the spring of next year, I'm going to reach back out. Hey, Marley, I know it was a goal of yours to purchase a home this spring. You want me to connect you with some local lenders and we can get the process started? Don't and let them slip away. And so to take it a step further, okay, now she's got Marley commenting. So right now, is Marley in your database? If she's not, she should be. So as you're talking to Marley, say, hey, by the way, you know, what's your address, what's your email, whatever. Marley should be in your database now. Um, but like you'll get, and, and make sure you post the right stuff. So I have, um, I gave some of these, I might need to make more. Some are black and white and some are color. I don't, I don't know how that works. But um, so this is like a quick like thing that I put together about like ways to capture people. Make sure the stuff you put is like good marketing stuff. Like if you put an old and like an old house that looks totally disgusting and is overpriced like do you think people are really going to like comment on it probably not so like screen the material that you're putting up short and sweet um put it on your personal page make it stuff that people are going to interact in um i have more of these that you guys can grab them after class and you can have one well, what if you have a client who's like why didn't you post my house post why why didn't you yeah well yeah. <laughs> well you said it's ugly and old uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to post you everything. To. You do have to. But I'm saying, like, if you want interactive posts, focus on what, like, fo um, focus heavily on the stuff that's going to get you more attention. Um, and you'll know, Rob, the more you start doing, you're going to be like, oh, this is going to be a good post. And like we said, feel free to share whatever you post. Um, she just listed a good one. She already put it under contract, and it had a beautiful pool. Something like that, post it because people love a pool. Hey, summer's coming up. Who wants to have the party house this year? Word it the right now, way. Now, that's a perfect happen. example though, because this house was very, the bones were great, it had a gorgeous pool, but it had green carpet from the 70s. Nice. It had a very old kitchen. It had tons of water and wallpaper. So if you'll notice my post, you'll see that I didn't pull the lawn up there. Um, so that too, Rob. Yeah. So you can kind of try to pick out the nicer pictures. Not that you're being deceitful, but it draws more attention for advertising. Yeah, because people are gonna be like, "Ew, that looks um, old." And people write the rudest stuff. There it is, right there. Like I had somebody that wrote, literally, yeah. "Who the hell would pay three fifteen for that shoe box?" Yeah. And I said, I literally was on the comment. People were texting me like, "You savage." And I commented, and I was like, I forget what her name was, and I was like, hey, so-and-so, yes, the market is absolutely amazing. Would you like me to come over and give you a free market analysis on your home? And she's like, oh, I rent. I'm like, okay. <laughs> People were texting me like, you did not. I'm like, I sure did. Because, like, why are you going to write that on my post? I thought, oh, wow, that's great. So it looks really great the way she marketed, right? Those few pictures. And it's a great house, and it's good inside, but it's just very dated. Yeah. So, you know, to... Hmm create more activity obviously I didn't um and this is your personal page right yep yep okay. we do everything we don't on use our page pages so um yeah you've never been flagged. creative like flagged for what you, like you never well because sometimes like somebody was saying earlier Facebook I don't know how often I guess if you boost it but I didn't think there was an option to boost on your personal page I don't I don't know if there is but I was just I was just curious yeah um, okay. But yeah, so if it is like an ugly house with green carpet, or Rob, you can kind of like word it like, hey, who's looking to do their own HTTV project? Mm -hmm. um, because then that kind of puts like, oh, I can do my own work on this house, yeah. and I'm going to have equity in it. So like, just pay attention to the way you word things. So something like that is a whole other social mm -hmm. media part. But like Bill was saying, as soon as you say that, HT, whatever the heck it's called, where they're fixing up houses, 
people love real estate and they love this whole flip thing. So if you want to really get a bunch of hits, put something like that. But say that, where are my investors? Or right. who? Because that's a whole other way to market on social media. Another thing too, I just lost my trend of thought. What did we do? Um, oh my God, I just forgot what I was gonna say. Anyway, but something like that, where you pick a topic like that, Rob, you'll get a ton of activity. Um, I was gonna say, go on. Um, just be mindful that you do not photograph other agents' mm -hmm. listings and put them on Facebook because you really shouldn't be doing Without that. Without permission. Without permission. Yeah, so like, We've had people, you know, like they're waiting for their client to get there, they're bored. So they do a walkthrough video yeah. of someone else's listing yeah. and put it on Facebook. Okay. You cannot do that. Yeah. And also don't take pictures of like some ridiculous mm. aspect of the mm. house because you mm -hmm. think it's comical and then you put that on Facebook. Yeah. Look at this bathroom, yeah. you know, upside down thing. In and the, you actually see that a lot. You yeah. do yeah. see yeah. it a yeah. lot, yeah. but I'll tell you the truth. We get calls, Dominic will get yeah. a call about that if you do uh, that. Do not I remember photograph one other people's years ago that was like blood on the carpet, and nobody was part of there. Right. <laughs> I did that. It was like way back when, and I put like a post on Facebook about like a bloody carpet, and Dominic was like, well, what are you doing? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll come back to bite you. Believe me. Yeah. And we've, yeah. we've had a few instances of that in the last month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's because me and Dominic were in continuing education on that. Topic. <laughs> and uh, he's like, if you think of anybody, I'm like, no, Dominic, I'm not telling anyone. I'm not telling you anything. Um, so, yeah, so use Facebook. Like, be creative to what you post. Um, you sure. could literally yeah. spend like all day you on could Facebook day. Mm -hmm. working, mm -hmm. like marketing. You really could. There's so much you could do with it and so many ways you could grow. Do you guys have questions? Like, is this making sense? Like, mm -hmm. um, so like other awesome incentives um, for people that you already know or people who may not think that they can currently purchase a house. So Bruce, he just walked by and made me think of it, is currently offering first front door which is a $5,000 toward closing cost grant. Um, so a post that I love is, would you believe me if I told you that you could buy a house with less than $5,000 out of pocket? Um, did anybody even know that? Whoa, you can. So you need to write like the mortgage information underneath of your post, you know, depending on your income and depending on your credit score and stuff like that. But you can totally buy a house built to 5,000. So if you make a post like that, People are going to be like, whoa, no, I didn't know that. So you're going to have people message, message, message me for more information. People will absolutely message you because they didn't know that they could buy a house for that little bit of money out of pocket. So we call it fake. This is what I was going to start to say to you, Rob. We call it fake. So for example, we're all in the business. We're all looking for business. Whether Pick your area. Where do you want to work? You want a listing in Springfield? Do you want a listing in Broomall? Do you want a listing in Chester? Wherever it is. Whatever your sphere is, wherever you want to work. And then ask an agent or office and advertise it. But recently, I mean, we have a ton of buyers. I'm sure you all know that right now there's little inventory. And as soon as things hit the market, they sell. So we put a post up on Facebook, this was like about two years ago, and I said, I need a house, and you can do this with anything, because you probably need housing, right? And I put something like, I need a house in Aston, Brookhaven, or Parkside, I forget what exactly it was. Less than 300,000, does anybody know of anything that's not on the market? I have buyers waiting, or something like that. It was so generic, and I really did. But we ended up getting a list in an Aston. We ended up selling their home. We ended up selling them another home. It ended up being like a, almost a $20,000 deal from that Facebook that just said, does anybody know of anybody that has a house in these areas? And somebody tagged their friend and we reached out. So right now, like you guys could totally put a post on Facebook. Does anybody know of anybody that has a house in Springfield, Ridley, or whatever? You know what I mean? Like you can ask for stuff like that. And if you ask for it, a lot of times you'll get it. So, and that could mean you told who said they wanted listings. That could bring you, yeah, Courtney, that could bring you listings. So this um, market's definitely a little bit trickier to do that in. Um, but occasionally like you'll, you'll run into sellers who don't want to deal with this open market, um, which is kind of crazy, but so you can kind of get stuff from that. So you can buy a house with less than 5,000 out of pocket. Let me know if you want to know how. So these people, have all look interested in PM me. Um, 
this person, tag this person. So message them and engage in the conversation and tell them what they can do or what they have to do to be able to do that. Now, of course, you're going to connect them to jo Joyce offers it too, so to Bo uh, Bruce or Joyce, and see what I don't think he offers it. Um, see what they can approve from. Maybe they won't get approved, but maybe they can set them up on a plan and then you can follow up with them in a couple of months from now. Hey, did you work on that plan so that you can get pre-approved for that program or whatever? And you might be laying the groundwork and that might not be something that will happen for six months from now, but you're laying the groundwork. If you keep doing that, you're going to like fill your your time with, with sales. Yep. Um, it says, don't annoy your timeline with only real estate posts. People don't care. Um, they will be ignoring it if it's not of interest to them until they are ready to buy or sell. Then they'll no, you know they'll notice it in a different perspective. They see it. They just don't always comment on it. Um, but like I said, put stuff out there that they're gonna want to interact with. And so like another thing, somebody in here actually taught me this with the stories at the top. If you actually go through and engage in these stories, I gotta watch because sometimes I like end up with in the wrong spot. I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so if you go through and engage in these stories, it'll help the engagement so that you'll see different people's stuff in your timeline. Um, like sometimes if you notice when you're going through Facebook, you see the same people over and over and you're like, what the heck, where is everybody else? It's because you're not interacting with the other people to get them to pop up. So go through these stories like daily and like put like a favorite or oh my god that looks so cute but or i don't know that actually it has to be a story i know we talked about this before as long as you're commenting on someone's post and not just liking it as soon as you comment and it can be annoying because then you're going to get all the notifications which you can turn off by the way but once you comment i think it does something with the back the, the whole algorithm yep. situation and it brings people like what said if you're not commenting and you're only liking or you're just scrolling you're not, they're not going to see your stuff. Eventually, they're going to get dropped down. So, yeah. The only reason why I want such stories can. is because, like, if you don't see certain people, that's, like, a way to find different people that you're not used to seeing, unless you, like, specifically search their name and comment on something that they've recently posted. Don't go through their pictures and like stuff that's two years old. Creepy. <laughs> People do that, and I'm like, you're obviously creeping on my real estate page because I don't even, I'm on my Facebook page because I don't even know you, and you just liked a picture from 2017. So, it's weird. So, careful what you creep on. Don't, don't let them know you're creeping by liking it. Um, what else? So we talk about, too, like the whole social media thing. If you're somewhere, like I said, whether it's a, you know, whatever, your church or your gym or your school, or your kids' sports game, as soon as you have a conversation with somebody, you know, Brooke says write it down. I mean, I don't go anywhere without my book. And the phones are great. And I know that's the new techie way. And that's the way most are younger people know it. But... I find that too much gets lost in my phone, so I think with pen and paper, you're going to have to call. Um, well, I was thinking about the app that we talked about. The uh, too, ma too many, um, but but like those people, you should be friend requesting them. Find them. You'll eventually find them. And you know, if their kids on the soccer team, like I said, and you talk sitting with the mom in the bleachers, like find her on Facebook and get the drunk monkey off her. She's going to be like, oh, she's going to think that's creepy. No, she's not. And if she does, then what? I don't know what your whatever. Um, so I'm like looking at that board. So best idea for a lead gen. So everybody obviously lives somewhere. Are you a member of your local community Facebook page? Everybody's nodding yes. I, I don't actually believe you guys. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I see everybody else and I see it all, so, all the comments from you. What better people to market than the people in your own neighborhood? Go through, add those people as friends. They're in your neighborhood, they're right around the corner from your house. You're probably going to see them at local events. Um, we went to an egg hunt in Bethel Township on Sunday. Now, I should have paid more attention to it because, well, it was cold as heck, so I'm kind of glad I didn't. But you can go there, you can set up a table, you can give away free things. They are looking for people to go there and do that. You don't have to bore anybody with real estate, but you can have a big Keller Williams banner on the front of your table. And you want to build that relationship with people. The more you're there and the more you see that same person, you're going to be like, oh, hey. And you're going to start seeing them and recognizing them, adding them on Facebook. Oh, hey, it's great to see you again. You know, last time you were here, we talked about little Johnny who was starting baseball. Did he start? How's he doing? Does he like the team? Build the relationship. Add them on Facebook. Make the communication. Um, Go to every community event. Paul, this is a good one for you. Go to everything you can go to. Put your name out there, meet people, walk around, go hand out cards, whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. If people don't want it, they're gonna throw them in the trash, who cares? But you might get one person 
and that's all you need. One, like a, the minimum commission right now is like, what would you say, a $200,000 house? I don't even think you can buy anything like that right now. Well, the minimum commission in most offices, right? It's not, I know it's not fixed, but we're seeing like what, 2,000, 2,500? 2,500 is the, yeah, but that's like a house that's a hundred, not even a hundred thousand. So like, I'm saying like the minimum house you can sell, like if you meet one person at a picnic or wherever you go, and they try to buy a $200,000 house, you're gonna, it's before you're splitting everything, it's like six grand potentially. And then you pay Keller Williams, but even so you're walking with say $3,800, maybe not off of the head, for going out for maybe two or three hours and, and talking to people, that's pretty good if you ask And it's me. a combination, like what was saying too, like with social media, once you're friend requesting these people, they're gonna see you in other places too, if you're doing what you should be doing. But you have to go to everything. You have to be consistent. You have to add them on Facebook. You have to interact. Like, keep doing the same thing. It's just repetitive, and then you know you're going to eventually be known. It's not going to happen overnight. I can promise you that. It took me about two years for my Facebook page for everybody on there to know that I'm a realtor. Now, saying, I mean, you can. I didn't. I didn't do this when I first got licensed. Now I'm doing it, so it definitely picked up speed a lot faster. So if you start this now, it's saying six months from now you're going to be crushing it. In addition to everything else that you're doing with right. events and everything. Um, so that's an idea for lead gen. Do it in every township, but definitely where you live, 100% where you live. Um, things that you like, like around around your areas and stuff, like different lo like local restaurants or anything. Volunteer, give back to your community. People definitely want to see that. Um, ideas to get listings. We like the whole, you know, we have a buyer in this area. Does anybody have anything coming up or anybody know anybody looking to sell? Or you just post that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you just sent me a house and asked me, oh, that's not going to work for my buyer. But now I have their information and I might be able to get the listing. Right. Um, so, yeah, sometimes we do white lies and we don't really have a buyer for that, but we eventually pick up a listing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, too, this is kind of all candid, but like if you think about a case of water, how much does a case of water cost? Two ninety nine, for example. Brooke and I will get, like, um, you can print them, print them here. here on the printer, like your name or whatever, and take them to the local soccer game. and give them tips for your water bottles or whatever, and they have your tag. You know, it's not like somebody's going to look at that and go like, oh, yeah, Rob, I got your tag. Oh, I want to buy a house. Like, I see you're on the water bottle. It doesn't necessarily always happen that way, but it's everything. You know what I mean? And when you do, like, little expensive things that really don't cost a lot of money, in addition to the free social marketing, you know, that's just another way to get people to recognize you in the business. Um, so getting started, add everybody that you know, message, message, message. People want to help. They definitely want to help. Um, We're going to do funny videos sometimes too, and we actually don't want to know in a while. But um, don't be afraid, like if you're sitting in an open house, or I should say if you're hosting an open house, don't be afraid to do something fun. Um, we've jumped in swimming pools. Literally, I'm not even kidding you, we've jumped in swimming pools and we're like, hey, we're here at this, we're getting ready to list this house, and she'll jump in the pool and I'll jump in the back, whatever. I mean, we've jumped on trampolines. Yeah, we're really like, embarrassing. But it's, I know that sounds crazy, and there's going to be some people who will be like, oh, that's not very professional. Well, I'm sorry, I'm like, I have who I am, and I'm doing videos, but if you like me, that's great. If not, that's okay, too, because somebody else hopefully will, and they'll want to work with me, but if people like be, like real on Facebook. So, Brooke had a pet skunk. We used to put funny things like with the skunk and houses and just like make stuff up and make them. Where is that? Which one? The jumping on the trampolines? See, my Facebook's not edited at all. It's really old. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to like think out of the box and do different things because people, I don't know, people notice you. It just brings different attention. Um, what else haven't we touched on? Um, does anybody have any questions? Reach more people. Right? Your friend requesting everybody you know and everybody who knows people that go to your videos. I'm not. I'm on the videos. That's when you make videos. Yeah. We even did one in Springfield where they had this really nice bar in the basement, and we were pretending like we were having drinks at the bar, like, like to show off the bar. And it's funny because you get so many comments and you get so many different things. But again, it just brings a different light to your listings. I was just going to say, you know, the model, the KW model is 9 to 11, lead gen, you know, and you're like, ugh. 
you know, what do I have to call people from nine to eleven? And I don't. So then you'll go off and you know start watching you know CBS or something. But social media. But like this you amazing. could do yeah. from nine to eleven or nine to twelve. Yeah. And, you know, but you have to integrate it into your time yep. blocking. Right. You have to do it. It's, this would be way more fun than calling people. Yeah, but it's a mix. It's it a, is a mix. You need you really need a couple different sources of lead gen. This is awesome. Obviously, we see the results. Door knocking, phone calls, open houses, everything, getting out in front of the public, getting to, to, to know people and getting to be known, as what Phyllis and Brooke are saying. It's this constant, you have to do it every day. And I love the fact that they said it's not going to happen overnight. You know, you've got to commit to the first two years of growing, planting that seed and watering it. Watch it grow. And I can tell you that now, even after you know being in the business for as long as I have, every day, every every day, I'm adding people to my database. And like I said, it may just start with the name of Maureen. She's been in the business forever. Um, same thing. I mean, Maureen is like you go to Drexel Hill and there's her billboard. Like everybody knows who she is. She knows they know that she owns that billboard and she owns that township basically or that borough or whatever. Um, because that's the brand that she's created for herself. So do, especially like newer agents, find your brand. People will, you know, that's how people will relate to you a lot of times. And it is the culmination of things. Um, there's things that you can do now that don't cost a ton of money. Brooke and I use Vistaprint and Greg. We, our, our team is all about Vistaprint. It's very inexpensive to mail postcards, but we always say make everything look the same. You know, like connected. You just met somebody on social media, or you're talking to them, or their pet dog, or whatever. You send your card, or whatever. Make sure they're on your database. Now, when you create your Vista print postcards, you can look at our cards, and there's a lot of them, and they always look kind of the same, like the big blue Bed Bath and Beyond coupon. We always say, make it so that when somebody opens the mail eventually, and they see your card, they don't even have to really look at it to know that it's from you. Make it look kind of the same. But do just list this. Just you know, it's not always about social media because not everybody's on social media. We do emails. Like we have a client email that goes out every two to three weeks. We give them bait. We give them. We're not asking for business. We're basically saying, hey, here's what we have. By the way, give them some information. Like Brooke said, whether you're a first time home buyer or here's some homes in your neighborhood that have sold, whatever. Give people information. Give them something of value. You're right about that, Phyllis. But the thing is. Um, 1029 Crozier Lane in Springfield. We are hanging out by this awesome bar. Look at this. It's a wet bar. Our new <laughs> listing in Springfield. We are just relaxing here, celebrating our new warm? listing and keeping warm with a glass of wine. Are you happy? So, okay. here. Cheers. We're cheering <laughs> over our new listing. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, like we are in Cougar Camp. Yeah. Um, so it's like dumb stuff, but like it, it makes you look different. Mm -hmm. um, and people notice the stuff. Like one time she said we were literally jumping on a trampoline. With I a remember that on. one. And that we're like, we're jumping for joy for our new listing. And like everywhere I would go for like a month, people are like, oh my god, the video you posted? I'm like, yeah. They're like, it was hilarious. Like people that I don't even talk to, I'm like, glad you saw it. Um, <laughs> There's my mom, she's a dumbass, jumping around in her skirt. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like I said, it just kind of like builds. It just creates something. Something different. different. Yeah. What you were saying about the postcards, I, I own all this town hunt. There's only 91 units in the development. There's 12 realtors who live there, right? And there's a guy, not one of us 12, who sends something out every month with the, the pendings and the active listings just in that little uh, circle, all right? And the last, last two that we got, there were no listings, there were no pendings, there were no anything. But he sent it out anyway and just said, we need, we need houses. And my husband said, what a waste of money that is, um, you know, to send that out with nothing on it. But you know what, he's smart because when I see that, it's on the heavier postcard. It's a, a page, but it's heavier uh, material. You recognize it. Always, same color, same everything, you know, and I, I open it, and I'm sure everybody else does too, right. to see what's going on that maybe I didn't catch. Right. But um, if he had missed a month or two, then he would have been forgotten. So it was worth it to send it out almost blank. It was awesome. <laughs> and she probably already said this because she did it, does every list, but I was looking through the videos. 
Do you know that big blue coupon? Yeah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. um, because you recognize it. So keep it all the same all the time. And if you don't want to spend money and do marketing, there's nothing wrong, especially it's getting nice out now. I know it's a little weird. You don't want to get that drunk monkey, but don't be afraid to door knock around a nice listing. Like if someone in our office has a listing and you like the area, it's free. Just walk around and say, I want to let you know your neighbor has a gas listed and here it is. And hopefully you'll get to talk to that person. And if you do, look up their address, find them on Facebook. And, and I'm going to put Paul on the spot because I told him earlier, I'm like, go door knock then. Like, whatever. Do whatever you got to do. It's getting nice out. And he's like, people get creeped out when I'm standing at their door. And I'm like, nobody wants to be bothered. They really, truly don't. So when we do door knock, we always have something in our hand. And we don't, we're not afraid to like flash it, like kind of like leave it like this, it's fun, colorful. And you're gonna knock, if, if this is the door, you're gonna knock on the door and then you're gonna stand way back and wear your pin that says your name on it. Right. Um, and you're gonna stand way back and when they come to the door, they're gonna be like, hello, can, can we help you? <laughs> Hi, yes, yeah, sorry, I don't wanna interrupt. Um, I'm Brooke Lynch, this is Phil Central with Keller Williams. We just wanted to let you know that we just listed a house uh, right up the street, we wanted to let you know that it's going to be open Sunday. Uh, if you want to come by and see what your neighborhood is selling for, we'd love to see you there. Here you go. Bye bye. That's it. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they'll stand. And if they want to talk, you will talk. And if not, then that's it. You end it right there. It's very quick. You don't want your you're boring. You're you're bothering somebody. And if you do or not, so, generally you'll get one person that will want to talk. I mean, sometimes they're not. I mean, you you'll usually get at least one person. And then if you engage in conversation, the way I look at this. I just came to contact because while I'm at the end of the driveway, I'm writing down that mailbox number. She's literally in her phone like one And they're, they're getting a car from to me, me and they're going to say, thank you, it was my community, blah, blah, blah. And maybe it sounds weird or whatever, but guess what? They're going on my mailing list. And I just have to say, because you know, whenever there's a class, I always have to do a power hour plug. Script this morning, door knocking. Mm -hmm. We also did a first half by owner. But door knocking, I'll pay you later for that door knocking. <laughs> but and if so you don't want to do it yourself, grab a buddy. Yeah. I mean, it's fun when you team up with somebody and split it. So what? Half the looks better than not. So, you know, don't be afraid to Absolutely. put it out there. Um, and don't ever go in. <laughs> That's another I, conversation. Yeah. I yeah. always <laughs> tell her story to every class because it's just so funny. The one guy invites us in. And her rule is, don't ever go in. She's Gonna yell at me after class because I literally share it every time I teach. Don't go in. Well, guess who went in? The guy's like, oh, come on in. I wanna. I'm thinking about listing. My mom's like, okay, right through the threshold. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Not that the guy was like creepy looking or anything, but you never know. So she's he's showing us the house, and he's like, oh, let me show you the basement. Oh God. <laughs> and my mom's like, okay. Like, no, 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 this is this opportunity to kill us, and I'm like, oh my God, mommy's gonna kill us. So literally, it was a little weird. He was weird, he was and weird. she was literally like this close to him, walking down the basement, and I'm like, oh my god, she's I'm standing like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm standing like six feet back. She's walking over the weights in the basement. He's showing her the in-home gym, and I'm like, what can I pick up to hit you over the head with <laughs> when he tries to do something? Oh my god, I was so scared. He was fine. He ended up calling me a couple years later <laughs> to uh, buy a house, but we still haven't sold him anything. Yeah, but he's on our mailing list. Oh, probably because there's bodies in the basement. Exactly. We <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh my god. So yeah, so we went in and uh, it was different. <laughs> but you know, and to wrap it up, because I know we're only two off, right? We're done. Yeah. Okay. okay. So real quick in a nutshell, the business that we've received as a result of everything that we're saying, I can't even do a calculate. I really can't. And you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be your listing. It doesn't have to be your open house. It doesn't have to be your sale. There's plenty of business to go around. Um, do what we're telling you do. To do, it works. And if you do it all, <clears throat> excuse me, it works faster. Um, but you just have to do it. It doesn't have to be anything formal, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just do something. Um, and, and use all these different things that are telling you because they really do work. Um, any ahas? So I'm like seeing all these like spaces. Yeah. Like I'm, That's I'm hoping that these like blank stairs are like ideas rolling yeah. through your head. Yeah. What yeah. you're gonna do? I today. love the cards. The, uh, the card. The that was the first thing yeah. I wrote down. Where awesome. the, the cards. I'm it's like, time consuming, but it really does work. And yeah. you're just building relationships. You're not asking for business. Well, yeah. honestly, I have received things like that from right. someone in a different industry. But it always, always puts a smile on your face. Yeah, I still receive stuff, and yeah. I'm like, I can talk to you in like. Ten years. But how, like, doesn't it make your day when yeah. you receive a card? You're like, yeah. oh, that was so nice. Like they thought of me. And eventually, so. like I said, they might not need you now, but when they do, 
if they're constantly keeping up or, with everything. or maybe somebody they know. Right, totally. Yeah, totally. But you have to be on Facebook too, because like the personal stuff, you're not Courtney with Keller Williams. You're just Courtney. Right. So you gotta get another way too, like or or send the mailers to people or you know whatever yeah. your other way is, but to let them know too that you're in real estate. Or even a handwritten note card to people that you guys know with your business card. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm in real estate. And if you um, haven't done that, you absolutely do need to do that. Like yeah. don't be shy. What do they call them? A secret agent. If you're a mm -hmm. secret agent, they're not gonna get on so don't be afraid to let people know what you do. And buy a pin, I think they're fifteen dollars. Buy a pin, buy and um, wear t shirts, mm -hmm. buy a baseball yeah. cap, whatever. Like because we we got a bunch of shirts made like tank tops to like work out and wear during the summer to like realtor um, hashtag real estate life. Um, it's just consistent. People see all, it all, all the time. Want to buy a house? I'm your girl. Like we had right. we had all kind of crazy stuff made and, and we use it and it's just like a combination of everything. But like if I'm shopping, people will be like, "What's your shirt say?" Oh, you're a realtor. Oh, where? Who do you work for? And it's like it's just you know. Do you have a car? Yeah, sure. Um, and that's another trick too. Have a picture on your business card stored in your phone somewhere like where you can find it quickly. And if somebody walks up to me and says, oh, do you have a card? I'm like, oh shoot, I don't. Um, but give me your phone number, I'll text you a picture of my card. Now I have their contact mm -hmm. information. Um, and then, but make sure you send them a picture of your card. Um, so make sure it's stored in your phone where you can easily access it. Like I have an album of just the business cards and then I send it right away. So now I have their phone number. Um, don't forget later to add it to wherever you have to add it and it doesn't just get forgotten. It's a lot and there's a lot of steps, but if you do it, especially go in the database, like really work on that because that's going to be the lifeblood of your business and stuff it's where you're going to make your money. And the majority of them will be people that you know and referrals and people who know people you know. So, Any other ahas or questions? No pressure, no diamonds. <laughs> Who's going to implement something immediately? Me, I already have. Tracy, what are you going to implement? A uh, couple things. That, one of the things I need to do is um, really want to, to change the way I do things right now. Is I, I don't, I never friend realtors because I don't want them on my page for that reason. Um, so I think I need to have a separate page that just is the place where I act social, but but this is I don't think it matters, Tracy. I'm friends with hundreds of realtors. They're just gonna keep blowing by your page. And you know what, it is nice too, occasionally. I don't do it a ton. I probably should do it more. Um, but occasionally I will send a, a personal card to a realtor because guess what? You might be able to recruit them at some point. I was gonna say, don't forget about your downline too mm -hmm. because you never know and they're like, hey, Tracy, you're really kicking it at KW. Like, and then a lot of times too, Tracy, realtors come in and out of the business a lot also. So like um, Joe Prince, I sold Joe a house, and he was a realtor here. Um, so yeah, that. I yeah, mean, that's what I said. I think you know you need a different approach than what yeah, you're doing. Totally. You know, Add everybody. It doesn't matter. Media. You don't know where your next lead's coming from. Yeah. What else? I'm gonna put y'all on the spot. Everybody's gotta get in. Yeah. Lisa, what are you gonna input? I like your door knocking script. Come to power hour. Practice it. <laughs> Heather, do you get one? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through and look for people that got married, had babies, and some of them. Yeah, and that, that was really short. Sure. Also, that's the best advice. Yeah, that's my favorite one um, because nothing makes your day more than getting a card from somebody yeah. that you really haven't heard from for a while. Is it is it creepy? Because you said you find out their address, so you don't ask them for that. Is so it been, like, I just go on public records, but right. if they don't already know, like no, they don't <laughs> even ever been like, how did you better. find out where I live? They I never they even ask. But like if they don't own a house, like let's say they rent, yeah. sometimes I'll be like, hey Heather, can I have your address? I have something I'd like to send you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do it anyway. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Paul, did you get anything? Yeah, I gotta keep that drumpy monkey's ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we all have it. Mm -hmm. I still have it too. Like there's so many scary things. I'm not good on the phone either. Like, and I oh, Paul's great right on the phone. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I can door knock too, it's just, I don't know. Sometimes it, when you're door knocking, bring value. Don't just yeah. door knock it. Be like, exactly. hey, do you what are you knocking on the door? You're not there. You're you bring like, hey, value. Yeah. 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 yeah, pick a neighborhood that has 
or that you're sitting in open house on. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, you know, your neighbor's selling. Do you want to compare your home to theirs? Like, come by Sunday. I'd love to see you there. Like, what we do a lot of times, and we haven't done opens in a while, but Brooke and I, when we would do them, we would say the open house is safe from 11 mm -hmm. to 1. Mm -hmm. We might say from 1 to 2, it's for neighbors, or from 10 to 11. And so yep. they get an hour, yeah. and then we would bring, like, yeah. Brian and Steve or something. Let, like let me say, if you, we, I'm so, we're starting to see more opens happening, which I love. Mm -hmm. Because I love getting that call from established agents saying, you know, who in your program wants to host an open? I love it. But if you are hosting an open and you are not door knocking beforehand or making calls beforehand to the neighbors, to the to your database, you're sitting in open house. You're not working in open house. If you're going to give up a Saturday or a Sunday, make it count. Absolutely. Keep in mind, too, this is the season where we love and we've been successful with what we call Twilight Opens. Yeah. There's going to be one next Wednesday from mm -hmm. 5 to 8 on one of my new listings that's coming up. Guess what? If you don't want to give up a weekend, mm -hmm. maybe do it at night. People love it because they're done work. It's still mm -hmm. light out, you know? Um, we've done plenty of them. And very yeah. easier for them yeah. to yeah. stop on their way home for Mark. We did one in Creekside Village. Um, so we're huge, like, market the heck out of your social media. If we're sitting in an open house, you better believe it's posted everywhere. Um, and we, we put one up, it was a, we did the neighborhood preview, come by for some wine and cheese and some snacks. Mm -hmm. And we put it uh, on Facebook. Well, we had a woman who commented on it. So we invited her to the open house. We were like, yeah, come by. She was from Springfield. She came to the open house and so did a guy that lived upstairs. And he literally sat there the entire open house and never stopped talking like, and he ate everything that we brought there. Me and her were like, this guy's so like, He's so hungry. He said, my wife's out tonight. This is dinner. Like laughing. And we were like, okay. Well, he ended up getting us all of the new construction houses in the neighborhood. So we had 11, 11 new construction homes. Thanks um, to the guy that ate our cookies and <laughs> And then the lady who found it on Facebook, we ended up selling her house, her neighbor's house, wow. and moving one other. Out of it. So yeah, so you that never like know. A, that was like a 15 deal open house that was wow. probably spent about $20 on awesome. Not always like that. You're not yeah. No, but it's, it's a possibility. possibility. It's like you never know. what. And, and But the thing is, if we didn't send out a postcard to that neighborhood and say, calm down, we'd like you, you know, to, it, it's a neighborhood preview. He would have never came to Come that see what house. your neighbor's house looked like. And we literally wrote here. that there were snacks. Because when he walked in, I think he had the poster in his hands. Like, I'm here for the snacks. And me and her were like, is this very <laughs> serious right now? So funny. But, yeah. So, yeah. so you never know where it's going to come from. Yeah. But market your open house. Send postcards to the neighborhood. Door knock the neighborhood. Put it on Facebook. Whatever. Do it all. You can't. There is no, no such thing as overkill in real estate. Yeah. And know. then make sure you thank the people that refer you, even if you put nothing out of it. Yeah. Right. If anybody ever refers you to somebody, send them a thank you card. Yeah, even if people, they don't pan out to anything. 